Have you also been drooling over this gorgeous poof designed by Teresa over at Des Brose? Let me show you how to make one. Hi there, I'm Anya from Peony and Time. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am so excited about this tutorial video. I was contacted a little bit ago by my friend Sarah over at Mama Knows Luxury where I get my giant yarn and she and Teresa over at Dave Rose um, were asking if I would be interested in, in making a tutorial video of how to make this gorgeous poof. Designed by Teresa. How adorable is this? So you guys, I had never made a project quite like this before, so this was a fun challenge. And I feel like I really learned some good things along the way too. So I wanted to go over step by step with you how to make this. Um, a couple of notes about the pattern. So giant yarn is measured by weight instead of overall length, um, the way most yarns, most regular yarns are. And so that does mean that sometimes um, when you have like the same amount of yarn, like the same weight, you might end up with like more or less yardage, which is definitely going to affect obviously the number of rows that you're able to make. Um, so between that and the fact that this is made um, without needles, of any kind, you're just hand knitting this. And obviously everybody's hand size is different. And so the same instructions for one person um, uh, can end up like with really different results based on um, what that means to what those instructions mean to you, like your hand size. <laughs> so um, what I learned with this pattern is that nobody's results are gonna look exactly the same probably. So mine looks just a little bit different from the one that Teresa made and yours will look a little bit different from both of ours. But I did have to adjust it and do a little bit of problem solving to um, make some of the steps uh, work better for um, the results that I was getting with like my particular yardage of yarn and my like hand size. Um, I am a tall person and I have like <laughs> large hands to match. So my tension for like a tight stitch is probably like a little bit larger than some people's. <laughs> so anyhow, so yeah, so basically what I learned with this is um, you don't have to follow the rules exactly. Try it, work through it a couple times. Um, the great thing is that this is not um, a lot of rows overall. This works up super fast. And so it's totally fine to just like work it up. And if that doesn't work, if that first try doesn't work for you, rip it out and try it again, you know? And um, and the fun thing about that, again, like I said, is that this is a, like a unique luxury piece with like unique luxury yarn. So it's kind of cool that you end up with something that is like uniquely yours. And oh my gosh, you guys, how cute is this? Like seriously, it's adorable. And um, yeah, it would make like a great gift for someone, but um, seriously, I really love this and this is definitely like staying with me forever now. So, <laughs> all right, so yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so first, a quick look at the supplies that you'll need. So obviously here we have our Big Stitch Merino wool. This is a four pound um, ball of it. And um, please note, <laughs> when you order yours, it, it'll be much softer and silkier looking than this. This is after I have, I knitted up a poof and then um, frogged it a couple times just to make sure that I knew what I was doing before I did this tutorial. So this has already started the felt just a little bit. So yeah, when you get yours, it'll be just beautifully silky, silky smooth. Okay, so we have our four pounds of wool and then we have two 20 inch round pillow inserts. Then I also have 20 ounces of loose polyfill. Um, you can buy this on Amazon. I just got this at Walmart actually. Other things you'll need will just be six feet of scrap yarn. Um, this is just some Lion Brand Thick and Quick in the color Fisherman, I believe. I had it on my shelf and it matches the color really well. So, perfect. Also, you'll need two yards of fabric that is kind of similar to in color to the wool that you're using. And that's just because you're gonna be scooting this down on the inside of the poof um, to cover up the little bit of polyfill. Because the last thing that you want after you finish your beautiful poof is to have little chunks of polyfill coming out between your giant stitches. <laughs> so this will just help keep that um, from showing through. And obviously it looks like I maybe could have gotten something that was a little more cream. I just should have taken a swatch with me to the uh, fabric store when I went, but this will totally work and be fine. Um, darning needle to finish off your yarn and 
yeah, that's about it. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and get started. Okay, so first step is if you have any rings, I would go ahead and remove them now because any sharp edges will definitely snag on this really soft, really soft yarn. Okay, so step one, you're gonna take your um, the tail here and measure out 10 feet. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make a slip knot. I'm sure you know how to do that, but if not, just twist the yarn like that. And then you're just gonna reach through, grab that yarn, pull it through. There we go. And so you can see that that can just easily slip back and forth. Okay, so next step is gonna to be to do a long tail cast on and cast on 20 tight stitches. Like I mentioned in the intro, Tension is everything for this project. Um, there are no increases or decreases. The size of it only changes depending on how um, small or large you're making your stitches. All right, so for the tight stitches, we just want the um, the stitches to be the size about um, the size of two fingers. So I'm gonna put two fingers in there. All right, looks good. So then we're gonna go ahead and do the long tail cast on. Um, so all that I'm doing for this is just basically wrapping, making a twist there, just like that, and then reaching through and grabbing this yarn. This is the live yarn that's connected to your ball of yarn here, and this one is that 10 feet of um, end yarn that we just measured out. So you can just twist that and grab through, or kind of, I like to just kind of wrap my hand around it, grab that, pull it through, and we do want to make these stitches nice and small so that when we cinch it together later, it will be as smooth looking as possible. Okay, so what I am doing is just kind of going along and putting two fingers through both of these so that I can make sure that they're kind of as close to the same size as possible. So on the third stitch there, we'll just keep on going. And the nice thing about this giant yarn is it does kind of tend to stay in place. So now that I, once I've formed these stitches, like they're not just gonna fall right out even though I don't have needles through them, which is awesome. So yeah, just kind of create that loop and then kind of snug it down to the point that you want, trying to keep them as even as, as possible. All right, then we're just gonna continue this and cast on 20 stitches total. All right, so 20 stitches. And as you can see, especially with a tight cast on, this is having a tendency to want to kind of spin around. So make sure, very, very important, <laughs> that you untwist those stitches um, before you join to work in the round. That otherwise I'll really, really come back to bite you. Okay, so we have just a small tail left here, which is perfect because we are just gonna need um, a little bit of room to um, weave this through the stitches and cinch it together um, after we have done a few rows. Okay, so next we're gonna join this to work in the round. Okay, and so I'm just gonna turn this around and go this way. Get this all set up. Make sure that there are no twists here. And then you're gonna have your working yarn coming from um, from above. And here's the last stitch on that I just cast on. Here's that first original slip knot. And I'm gonna reach through, grab that yarn, and just pull it right through. Okay, so there is my very first stitch. And one thing that I will note is that with this very last stitch, um, again, since we don't have it on needles, um, the, the good thing is that all the rest of these stitches are gonna stay on super well, but I have noticed it can be a tendency for this one to want to fall out a little bit because all that's holding it in place is just this uh, little end 
um, staying down. So just keep an eye on that. Make sure you do still have 20 stitches and that one, that one doesn't fall out. Um, and then after you finish your first round, it won't be a problem anymore, but do keep an eye on that little guy for the first round. Okay. So we finished the first stitch there, kind of cinch it down. So it's about two fingers because you're going to knit these first few rows nice and tight. Okay. So again, reach through, pull it. So it's about two fingers. Great. And then you're just going to start working around, trying to make sure that those are nice and even. And again, nice and small. And make sure, um, one note, make sure when you're reaching through this next one, since we're focusing on pulling it tight, <laughs> make sure you either keep an eye on or maybe keep a couple fingers through the previous stitch. Otherwise, when you're pulling it tight, it can have maybe a tendency to pull this, um, to pull a little bit of, uh, a little bit from the previous stitch. And you don't want that because then they are going to end up really uneven. So just, you know, keep an eye on that. All right. So yeah, whether that means you keep a couple fingers through that one while you're moving on to the next one or whatever you need to do um, just to make sure those stay nice and even. All right, then just continue working your way around. Oh, another thing too, you can kind of make sure that um, if you see these are going to want to sit kind of like that. You're going to want to make sure that these are laying nice and flat so that the one facing the front ends up on the right hand side. Um, otherwise it'll end up, so you see how that kind of lays nice and flat like a heart. Otherwise, if you turn it the other way, yeah, it's fine. You can totally do that, but it ends up with kind of a twisted stitch look. I like them to lay flat with that classic knit heart shape and to not be twisted. So. And if you have a hard time at all, don't worry. This first row is definitely the trickiest, I would say. Just And then once you kind of get those stitches established, way easier. So if you have a little bit of a difficulty on the first one, don't sweat it. The following rows will be way easier. All right, then all the way back around to that final stitch there. And so now you can see now that we have a stitch, this is much more secure, so we don't have to worry about that falling out again. Um, and in case you lose track of your rows, you can, um, you can always take a look back here. Um, so this original loop right here, this is our cast on loop. It does kind of look like a stitch, but your actual rows, so we just finished our first row, your actual rows are gonna be the second, the second heart shape up there. So we are going to continue with row two, knitting nice and tight, just like we did for row one. So we'll just work our way back around there again. All right. That was row two. Looks good. And so now I am going to continue on and knit three more rows. So we'll have five rows total of this tight knitting. And then I'll meet you right back here. All right, so I've been working my way around here. Um, so I'm just finishing the fifth row. I just want to show you real fast. I forgot to mention earlier. Um, one of the things that I do as well, so making the stitch there, then I'll go ahead and like pull up a little bit because we're just going to kind of try to shape this the way we want as much as we can. Alrighty, so just finished rows one through five. Now we're going to do rows six through eight and we are going to just do what Teresa is calling just a more regular knit. Um, so it's just going to be a little bit looser. What I ended up doing for mine was to have more nearly like three fingers through instead of two. For those of you with like lovely petite hands, um, you can maybe just use your whole hand. I found that when I did like my whole hand through, it used up a little bit too much yarn, too fast. So I'm just going to do about three fingers through. So keep that last stitch in place. And then, so we've got about three fingers through there. I'll reach through here, pull about three fingers through as well. Make sure we're remembering to pull it up, keep it 
moving in that nice cylindrical shape that we want. All right, then reaching through again. All right, and then so we are just gonna continue knitting around here. Like I said, for three more rows, rows six, seven, and eight. All right, so I'm just finishing up row eight here. So again, I'm doing my three fingers through here, reach through and grab, about three fingers through. Okay, so next, um, we're gonna take a break from knitting and then we're just going to close this, the bottom of our project here. So what we're gonna do is just whip, take this tail and then we're just gonna do kind of an easy whip stitch through um, every other loop. So we've got that end here. And so I'm just gonna weave it through these, um, through these bumps on the end. So just every other one. So I'm gonna take this end, pop it right through that loop there and then I'm, and then skip one, and then I'm gonna weave it through this one. And just, I'm just going back and forth. And then skip one, and then go through this loop. Skip one, go through this loop. So, okay, so we're just gonna try to pull that tight. And the great thing about this yarn is, even though it's so soft and lovely and unspun, it's nice and sturdy, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this up here from the inside, pull that nice and tight, great. And then I am just going to pop this through that last stitch there, and then just make sure that's still nice and tight there, and then pull that through into a knot. Make sure that's going to be a nice firm anchor. Great. And we could even weave it through one more and make a nice knot. Make, just make sure that's not going anywhere. Now you are certainly welcome to go ahead and then weave in this end and get rid of it. I am just going to leave it there because you know what? It's going to be on the inside of this project. There's going to be pills and fluffy stuff in here anyway. And so happy to just just leave it in there and let it chill All right, so I just completed 16 rows with my poof, and as you can see here, that is all the yarn I have left. So I'm here, I've knit as far as I'm able to with this amount of yarn, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this, get the stuffing in here. 
All right, all right. So for that, let's just go ahead and weave this guy through. So here's my last live stitch that I just knit there. So just thread this through all the way around. Right, and so you can see here, this is my last live stitch. So I'll just thread that right through there. All right, so, hooray. So grab pillow number one, and I'm just gonna kind of um, scrunch it together in the middle here so I can get the sides down and just get that firmly down to the base there. All right, ah, doesn't that look so cool? All right, pillow number two. Go ahead and squish that in there. Pull this around. Oh, how awesome does that look? Cool. So this is what it looks like from a side view. Um, so you can see it's like kind of going like straight up there or maybe even in just a, a little bit at the sides there. So in order to give it like a nice um, plump, perfectly round look, this is when we're going to pull out our fiber fill. So I'm just gonna grab some of this and just start stuffing it down the sides here. Okay, and this, put that down there. And so it's just gonna kind of go in this gap, like right between the two pillows. So where it was kind of like, you can kind of see that like little bit of curve in at the side there. We're just gonna stuff some fiber fill down. So it just looks kind of like we have one gigantic pillow in there. Great, I'm gonna call that good. Okay, and now this is where our fabric comes in. Um, so as you can see here on the side, like you've got your beautiful stitches and then you can kind of see some like polyfill sticking through there and that is not really like the lovely look that we want after all our hard work. So I'm just going to take this fabric and then just tuck this right down inside These stitches are so large that you can kind of reach down and like pull that fabric right to where you want it to be. Okay, cool. So we already have our yarn woven through these ends here. So let's just squish this down on the inside kind of gently pull this taut here. You can always like pull up your sides a little bit too so that you can add like as much height to kind of help that out. Ooh, looking pretty good. Nice. You guys, this is actually looking like a poof, which makes me really happy. All right, looks good. And then I don't want to put too much more pressure on this. So I'm just going to poke this through here and then just like pull that there. And then I'm gonna do a knot. Go ahead and pull that tight. So I've double knotted it there. So that should be um, pretty secure. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck all of this in here because, you know, why not have a little extra padding up at the top there. And this is where I'm gonna grab my scrap yarn that we discussed earlier. It's a little extra support here. So let's thread this through and we'll just double it up. So.
it, but I think I'll just maybe go underneath the stitch here. All right, and then turn. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this here to remove my darning needle. One last knot on there, and then I'm just gonna tuck this down in there. Oh my gosh, you guys! <laughs> Ta da! So you can kind of like reshape it as you need to a little bit, and and oh my gosh, you guys, we made a poof! We did it! All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for watching. So. That was surprisingly easy, wasn't it? You guys, I'm genuinely like so happy with this result. It's so, so cute. So don't worry, this is not a pattern to like worry about like sticking right to the rules with. You can freestyle a little bit, see what works for you. And um, if you don't get the exact same row count that I'm able to get or that Teresa got, don't even worry about it. I hope watching this video will help you give just kind of like a basic idea of what you can do and then um, you can just figure out what exactly works for you from there. It's gonna be great. Anyhow, if you do make one after watching this video, um, I would love for you to comment below and, um, and tell me how that worked for you. And yeah, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Have a great week. Bye.